Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be taking a look at analysis of three-phase full wave control rectifier with RL load. So let's get started. So we had seen the complete operation of how a three-phase full wave control rectifier works with an RL load, isn't it? We had found out how the waveform appears for different operations and cycles, and we had arrived at this particular waveform. So now what we are going to do in this video is we are going to derive the expression for average output voltage and RMS output voltage for this particular circuit. So why is it important? They're important because we will be solving numericals related to it and you will definitely need to understand how we derive it rather than remembering the final expression that we have used. So at the first place, let us start with the average output voltage. So. average output voltage the average output voltage is given by the notation v out dc and it is equal to 1 by total time period the total time period here if you consider this particular waveform is nothing but pi by 3 isn't it so we are controlling or triggering the each interval for a duration of pi by pi by 3 as we have seen in the operation that is for 60 degrees so that is why the total time period here considered to be equal to pi by 3 integration of the lower limits is pi by 6 plus alpha as i had mentioned in the operation that the minimum firing angle for triggering this here will be at this point so pi by 6 plus alpha up to pi by 2 plus alpha because it's going to conduct for 60 degrees before the next cycle starts. So we're going to consider only one cycle for average voltage calculation, output voltage calculation. So if you carefully observe, this is pi by 2, that is 90 degrees. So it is up to pi by 2 plus alpha into VAB d omega t. So if you know how to write this upper and lower limits considering the total time period, from here it is straightforward as you have to solve it mathematically. So you might be having a question as what is VAB? VAB is nothing but the line voltage, which we had seen in the previous case. We had found out that it is equal to root 3 Vm sine of omega t plus 30 degrees. That is nothing but pi by 6. So just in case you do not understand how this expression has come, please do watch the previous video where I have explained in detail. Now let's substitute that V out DC in this particular equation taking 3 in the numerator and root 3 outside, Vm outside. So you'll be left out with pi by 6 plus alpha, pi by 2 plus alpha, sine of omega t plus pi by 6 into d omega t. So now let's further simplify this particular expression. Let's consider another page. So V out DC is nothing but 3 root 3 Vm by pi. Integration of sine is nothing but minus cos. So minus cos of omega t plus pi by 6. Lower limits is pi by 6 plus alpha and upper limits is pi by 2 plus alpha. Again, this expression can be written as 3 root 3 Vm by pi. Substituting the upper and lower limits, that is minus cos of pi by 2 plus alpha plus pi by 6. Minus of minus will be plus, so you'll have for the lower limits, you'll be having pi by 6 plus alpha plus pi by 6. So this is nothing but 3 root 3 Vm by pi. You'll be having, considering this term first because it is positive. So taking LCM and simplifying these two terms, you'll be getting cos of pi by 3 plus alpha minus cos of alpha plus 2 pi by 3. Now this is nothing but cos of a plus b which is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. Substituting in that way you will be getting 3 root 3 vm by pi. 
this is cos a is nothing but cos pi by 3 cos alpha minus sin pi by 3 sin alpha this is this entire term is for this cos of a plus b again you'll be having minus cos of alpha cos 2 pi by 3 minus of minus is plus sin alpha sin 2 pi by 3 now you'll be getting 3 root 3 vm by pi this is 0.5 cos alpha that is cos 60 degree is 0.5 minus sin pi by 3 is root 3 by 2 sin alpha minus so again cos 2 pi by 3 is nothing but 0.5 that is minus of minus will be equal to plus so plus 0.5 cos alpha plus again you will be getting root 3 by 2 sin alpha so these two will get cancelled out you will be left out with v out dc to be equal to 3 root 3 vm by pi times cos alpha that is for 0 less than alpha less than or equal to 180 degrees so this is the average output voltage expression now let's take a look at the rms output voltage expression again let's consider the waveform just for considering the upper and lower limits so it's the same as we have derived it for the average output voltage you'll be having the same upper and lower limits and the to total time period also remains the same so let's write down rms output voltage B RMS output voltage RMS output voltage V out RMS is given by square root of again I am going to consider the same term so I am going to write as in a simplified form 3, 3 by pi into root 3 whole square vm square integration of pi by 6 plus alpha pi by 2 plus alpha sine square omega t plus pi by 6 into d omega t i'm considering the expression directly here as the explanation remains the same in terms of the total time period and the upper and lower limits consequently by the definition of rms value square root of 1 by total time period integration of the VAB square VAB is nothing but root 3 VM sin omega t plus pi by 6 substituting you will be getting this particular equation now this equation can be written as 3 into 3 root 3 square is nothing but 3 VM square by pi and we can write this term as pi by 6 plus alpha pi by 2 plus alpha sin square omega t can be written as plus theta can be written as omega t sin square sin square sin square theta can be written as 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 isn't it so we can write it as 1 minus cos of 2 times omega t plus pi by 6 by 2 into d omega t Again, we will simplify this in the next page. So, V out RMS is equal to square root of 9 Vm square by 2 pi taking 2 outside. Integration of 1 is nothing but omega t and integration of cos 2 omega t plus pi by 6 is nothing but sin 2 times omega t plus pi by 6 whole divided by 2 upper and lower limits remains the same now this can be further simplified as 9 vm square by 2 pi 
integration of pi by 2 plus alpha minus the lower limits that is pi by 6 minus alpha minus taking 1 by 2 outside we'll be getting sine of 2 times pi by 2 plus alpha plus pi by 6 this is 1 plus sine of 2 times pi by 6 this is for the lower limit plus pi by 6 isn't it now you will be getting sine of 9 vm square by 2 pi this is nothing but plus and minus gets cancelled alpha so you'll be left out with these two terms adding them you'll be getting pi by 3 minus 1 by 2 you'll be having sine of 4 pi by 3 plus 2 alpha substitute simplifying this minus sine of 2 pi by 3 plus 2 alpha so here now when you are substituting this is sine of a plus b form sine a cos b minus cos a sine b substituting and simplifying you will be getting square root of just like the way we split it and solving i'm not going to do that again but if you follow the same procedure you will be getting pi by 3 plus root 3 cos 2 alpha and further simplifying this you will be getting v out rms to be equal to 3 vm by 2 into square root of 2 by 3 plus root 3 by pi cos 2 alpha for 0 less than or equal to alpha less than or equal to 180 degree so this is the v out rms expression please make a note of it these are extremely important for solving the problems. I hope this video gave you a clear understanding of the analysis of a three-phase full-wave control rectifier for RL load. In case you have any questions, feel free to reach out by typing your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Thank you.